So in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up the TP-Link AX1800 dual band Wi-Fi router. And if you don't already own one, I'll leave a link to it right below the video. So feel free to check that out. So you want to remove the outer plastic packaging and then pull the inner tray out of the box. And the first thing you'll find in this tray is a quick installation guide, another document, and very importantly, the card with your default Wi-Fi password on it. You want to make Make sure to hold on to this card we'll need it during the setup process next you'll find the router itself let's set that aside for now and you'll also find a power adapter and ethernet cable next you want to remove all the protective film on the router itself and on its antennas and next you want to locate your internet service providers modem or box that's mounted in your house and this box should typically have an ethernet cable coming out of it or should have an ethernet port in the back. You then want to connect the provided ethernet cable to the back of the modem or box and then plug the other end into the blue port on your Wi-Fi router. And before you ask, yes, this is a permanent connection. The modem will remain connected to the router even after the setup process. Next, we'll plug the power adapter into the back of the Wi-Fi router and then make sure the power button on the back is pressed in. You then want to make sure your modem or box is powered on and connected to the internet. Then plug the router's power adapter into a wall outlet. The Wi-Fi router then boots up and the lights in the front begin to blink and eventually turn solid. Once the process is complete, all four LEDs on the left will turn solid green. And this is all the setup that you need to do on the router itself. The rest of the setup has to be done on a computer or mobile device. In this video, I'm going to be setting it up using a Windows computer and a web browser. But you can use a web browser from almost any device, including a Mac or a mobile device. And the procedure is pretty much identical. The first step in the process is to connect this device to the new Wi-Fi router's Wi-Fi network. Now, the names of the networks and the password to be used are what you would find on that card that I had shown you earlier. And in my case, that is TP-Link 1314. And I'm going to connect to the 5 gigahertz version of that network. You can connect to either one of those networks. It'll work just fine. Click connect and enter the password that was on that card. And then click next and give it a few seconds to connect to that network. And once it's connected, it'll say the words no internet comma secured. This is fine because we need to do a little more additional setup to get it to work. And to do this, we're going to have to open up a browser window. You could either use Microsoft Edge, Firefox, or Google Chrome, or Safari if you're using a Mac. In my case, I'm just gonna use Google Chrome. Once your browser window opens up, type in tplinkwifi.net and then hit enter. On the page that follows, it asks you to set up a new administrator password. Now this isn't your Wi-Fi password, but it's a password to access this portal to change the settings and configuration of your router. So make sure to remember what this password is. It'll be really important if you need to change your Wi-Fi password and change other things on your router. So enter the new password, then confirm the password, and then click let's get started. On the next page, it asks you to select your time zone. So select your time zone and then click next. On the screen that follows, it asks you to select your connection type. I recommend leaving it as the default dynamic IP and then click next. And the next screen asks whether you'd like to set your router MAC address. I recommend just leaving it as the default. So select the use default MAC address option and click next. On the screen that follows, it asks you if you'd like to change your Wi-Fi password. I highly recommend doing this. This will actually change the network name and password on both the 2.4 gigahertz network and the 5 gigahertz network. So go ahead and do that and click next. And then it asks you whether you'd like to turn on auto updates for the firmware on the router. Now this choice is entirely up to you, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna click not now and then click next. 
And on the screen that follows, it lets you know that you've successfully completed the setup of your router. However, there's one more critical step to complete. You want to jump back into your device's Wi-Fi settings and connect to the new network that we just created. In my case, that is Vortex. Now, the unusual thing that you'll notice is that the two separate networks, that is the 2.4 gigahertz network and the 5 gigahertz network, are no longer visible. There's just one network and that's because this router has something called Smart Connect and this combines both those networks and makes them visible as one network. And so you don't really need to choose which network you want. The router kind of chooses for you, which is kind of a cool feature. So enter your new password and hit connect. And once your device connects to the network, you should now be able to use the internet. And this is pretty much all the setup you need to do to get your TP-Link AX1800 Wi-Fi router up and running. Now, if you haven't already purchased this router, I'll leave a link right below the video. So feel free to check that out. And if you have any other questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you found this video useful, please hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.